we run through the forest. In front of me is Tozaka, leading the way. Behind us is Assassin, pursuing us through the trees. Behind you, Emiya-kun. She must be worried about us, even though she could have escaped by now. She slows down and turns to look at us. I know that the enemy is right behind us, but I can't shake him off. Servant Assassin is after us. There's no way I can shake him off when I have Ilya with. That is far enough. There is no need for you. What? I hear an ominous voice right by my ear. When I look to my side, I see White Death's head smiling as he licks the dagger. The masked figure is knocked away. While running beside me, Assassin was thrown off guard by a kick to the side. <laughs> so you cannot even kill a kill unless you attack him by surprise, you third rate. Archer does not slacken his pace as he talks. I will take the rear. You take Ilya and run. Hurry, or we'll all die if that thing catches up to us. Archer is looking at Assassin and something else that is coming from behind him. It's after us. The shadow that is coming after us while staining the ground black. We can talk later. Run, kid. You took Ilya's hand, so protect her until the very end. Archer slows down a bit and goes behind us. At that instant, right before he leaves, he gives Ilya a look with heavy regret. I go through the forest with the sound of clashing swords in my back. As Assassin follows, he is obstructed by Archer's efforts. Unable to sustain, sustain the offensive, Assassin is once again forced to retreat. Their attacks are mad. Even the daggers thrown at me are shot down, and it's obvious that Assassin is not in control of the fight. But it's not because Assassin is weak. Archer repels the multitude of daggers. His vigor is incomparable to before. The scales of victory are tipping towards Archer. I don't know why, but he is as strong as a fierce god right now. How can he still move? Even with the strongest attack repelled, Assassin raises his voice as he retreats. In response, It's simple. I'm not a respectable hero like the others. A heroic spirit that is not pure is no different from that mud. In other words, Archer must consider it his chance of victory as Archer charges. Although it is not to your degree, I am a distorted heroic spirit as well. He cuts the white skull with one blow. The black cloak scatters in all directions. Assassin retreats, clutching at his broken mask. It's not a retreat to regroup, but a retreat to save his life. The black servant runs away from Archer and disappears into the trees. Nice job. You don't have to worry about getting overtaken now. Thanks for the hard work, Archer. You're tired, right? You can return to spirit form and rest. Tosaka looks relieved. Behind her. It appears as if born from the tree's shadows. Not what? She looks behind her. At the same time, the black shadow extends the tentacle and... I won't make it even if I run. I'll witness Tosaka getting pierced by that black tentacle. But the one I actually see impaled is Archer, who pushes Tosaka aside. Huh? Tosaka looks up at Archer with odd comprehension. It's the end for Archer. He's still breathing, but he's not bleeding much. It should be possible for him to heal himself even if he is pierced, as long as it's not fatal. But somehow, I understand that Archer cannot fight anymore. That thing kills servants. No matter how strong a heroic spirit one is, one cannot beat that black shadow as long as one is summoned as a servant. I vaguely comprehend that fact for some reason. No way. What are you doing, Archer? Tosaka must have felt the same thing. She calls to Archer with a trembling voice, stands up unsteadily, and... Don't come! Run away, you fool! 
At your shout, it stops your cold. The black shadow throbs. The forest is dying. All the magical energy here is being shucked, sucked by that shadow. For some stupid reason, it reminds me of a water balloon. It's like putting more water into an already full balloon. It's expanding beyond capacity, and I get the bad image of it explode. Crap. We'll get sucked up. If we stay here, we'll get engulfed for sure. Archie pulls out the tentacle that pierced him and starts to run to Tosaka. Then I... Protect Ilya. I'll protect Ilya. I can't try to save two people. Tosaka has Archer, but Ilya has no one. Then, I have to take Berserker's place. Yeah, Sit down, Ilya. I attack Ilya, forcing her to the ground. And the instant I cover her body with my own, my vision and perception is filled with black. It's hot. My body is almost blown away. The condensed and released wave of magic energy rages through the forest as a storm. It's not there. My vision is painted black. If it's this dark, even though I can clearly see, a black sun must have come falling down. My body's not there. It probably melted from the heat. My body's not there. The loss from my sense of touch is more disgusting than the pain. And that's the problem. I can't protect Ilya unless I have a body. The black shadow tries to take Ilya. I flail my right arm to drive it off. Embracing her with that same arm, I press her to the ground. I finally realize my body's there. My body must be there or else I couldn't have protected Ilya. Man, I panicked too much. All I lost was my left arm. That's the only part of me that vanished without a trace. The rest of my body is still there. But I still have the sense of loss. I only lost one of the two. But it feels like I lost my whole body. It's disappearing. The shadow fades away without trace. It's energy spent. Ilya safe. My ears must be numb. As I can't hear what she's saying. What happened to Tosaka? Archer is there. His red cloak is painted a deeper red, and he's so weakened that he might disappear in the next second. How strange. Why is she here? Have you gone mad? If you do such a thing, you will. I do not even need to think about it. Two will disappear if I do nothing, but one can be saved if we transplant him. This body is almost dead anyway. If I am to disappear, it will not make a difference even if my arm is cut off. Archer and Ryder are talking. What the hell is going on? And in the end, one would normally die. One cannot survive after attaching a spirit body to the human body. But the boy and I are an exception. Rin should treat him appropriately once she wakes up. He tenderly runs his fingers through Tosaka's hair. My vision fades to black. The dark sun no longer shines on the forest. Then, the darkness must be falling on my consciousness. So this is it. Farewell, Tosaka. Archer bids farewell in a voice that sounds just like mine. The shadow wavers. The red knight is covered in blood, and Tosaka is sitting on the ground, dumbfounded. About five meters away from them stand the silver-haired girl and Ami Ashiro, hand in hand. The shadow wavers. After shrinking like a dead tree, the shadow expands like a blowfish. No, its poisonous nature is like an uglier deep-sea fish. The expansion continues without limit, swelling outward and dying the forest black. At that instant, the Red Knight dies protecting Tosaka Rin, and Emi Ashiro survives by pure luck. It is fortunate that the ground is uneven. The expanding shadow passes over Emi Ashiro, who is in a hollow pit, but his left arm is above its rim, unable to share in that fortune. She wakes up. It's been half a day since she sent Ryder to guard Shiro. 
Mato Sakura, who shared vision with her servant to follow the situation without ever even leaving her house, is brought back to reality with that scene. She feels like vomiting. Her vision is blurred as if she lost it, but she cut the shared vision off by force. Her body is sweating, and as soon as she breathes, what's in her stomach rises up to her throat. She runs into the dressing room. She's covering her mouth with her hands, and as soon as she gets to the sink, she vomits out everything in her stomach. She stands there with her head down, her shoulders heaving. Her long hair flutters like a curtain, hiding her face from the mirror. No way. Senpai's arm. She recalls the nightmare. There's no mistake about the vision. Emiya Shiro's left arm was swallowed by the shadow while protecting the silver-haired girl. It melted away without trace from the shoulder down. What have I? Sakura masochistically yells at herself for considering such a thing. She feels a chill and a strange uplift, not able to think about what happened and what she must do. All she knows is that she hates herself. She previously got the idea that if Amyashiro were injured to a point where he couldn't be able to go outside, he would not be in danger anymore. No, that was all wrong. Yes, she was wrong. It will not solve anything. Was it simply carelessness that made her wish for him to be hurt? Now he has been wounded, regardless of her wishes. Not a wound that would keep him indoors, but one that threatens his very life. There's no difference between the two. That's what it means to be injured. Why did she think that a misfortune to lose a part of one's body is a good thing? The nausea does not go away. She has not stopped vomiting even after throwing up everything. Gastric juice and blood. She thinks that the sharp pain in her stomach and the scratch on her throat is like a punishment to condemn her. And after a while, her nausea finally goes away when the gastric juice runs out and she regains her composure. She breathes heavily. Her shoulders are moving up and down painfully. She puts her hand on the sink and tries to calm down as if she's just finished running a marathon. But Senpai can't fight anymore. In a trance, she speaks her true feelings. A short murmur. Still breathing heavily, she raises her head. The figure in the mirror is crushed by a feeling of guilt. The apologetic expression is caused by her worry for Emiyashiro's well-being. She truly wishes for his safety. The mirror reflects a face with a crooked smile. It's hot. I'm trapped in a sultry stone room. The heat radiating from my shoulder is like a plague of microscopic bugs eating my cells. My shoulder, the place where my arm used to be is covered with honey and ants are swarming on it so it looks like a carpet. It's hot. My body is burning from within. This isn't like a sultry stone room but more like a sealed frying pan. I hear the sound of something burning and realize that I've been scorched black. It's hot. The heat melts my mind, leaving my body untouched, slowly and fiercely. It burns through my jeans as if trying to overwrite them. Is this nightmare finally coming to an end? It's hot. The hole is sealed so that the ants cannot escape. It's hot. 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 The hole is in my shoulder. I don't know why, but my missing left arm became a gateway, allowing the ants to flood into my body. And the entrance, the hole to let them out is sealed with flesh that's not mine. It's changing. It's changing to something I don't know. It's coming in. Knowledge I shouldn't have is flowing into me. It is his battle experience and battle information. That is his noble phantasm. It's not the pair of swords. Kancho and Bakuya. Favoring the treasured swords made by an ancient blacksmith, he himself was a blacksmith heroic servant. That's why he creates. He duplicates everything he sees and understands. No, 
It's not duplication, but projection. A unique magic that reproduces the real thing using an image in the caster's mind. And the heat burning my mind tells me to manage this skill. Don't kid me. That's impossible. It won't fit. I don't know about projection. I'm not at that level yet. Cutting corners like this will destroy my body. First of all, I have my hands full of myself. I can't memorize or use someone else's ability. I don't have the needed power to begin with. I'm with strangers with no connection, so there's no way it will become familiar with my body. No, I won't be able to bear it even if it becomes familiar with my body. You can't put time out of order or destroy the regularity. Even if you help me, I don't have the skills to handle it. My consciousness slowly returned. I'm sleeping on an unfamiliar bed in an unknown room. I raised my body. I think I met Saber at the forest. Ran away with Itolosaka and Ilya. Our eyes meet. Ilya is beside the bed, staring at me with blank amazement. I see. So you're alright. I sigh with relief. I don't get the situation, but I'm glad Ilya is alright. Oh good, you're awake, Shiro. Oh, wait, Ilya. Ilya charges at me. Whoa. I'm glad. I'm so glad, Shiro. Hugging me, she buries her face in my chest and repeats herself over and over. Man, I don't get what's going on, but I can't do anything if she's crying like this. Does your wound hurt? I'll make him put on another one if you think that's slightly strange. Oh, it doesn't hurt anywhere. More importantly, can you explain to me what happened after it? As I speak, I feel like a long knife is thrust into me. Unable to bear the pain, I tear at my chest with my right hand. Shiro, calm down. Don't try to bear it, but try to repress your left arm. Left arm. I don't quite get it. I don't, but I want to escape this pain as quickly as possible. I relax my mind. Once I start meditating, I quickly understand which part of me is abnormal. I can control it more or less if I know the origin of the pain. I just need to create a barrier so that the foreign substance can't enter my body. Phew. I'm fine now, Ilya. Yeah, I can tell. I wondered what had happened, but they don't seem to reject each other, at the very least. It seems like Ilya knows what's causing the pain. I look at myself and notice that I'm wearing big hospital clothes. No, these are more like restraints. All I can move is my right arm. Everything else is firmly belted down, and I can't take them off myself. What are these? Why am I wearing something like this, Ilya? Um, that... Ilya looks away awkwardly. I shall explain the rest, Emiya Shiro. Then, a person I really don't want to see appears. She has recovered as well. All I need to do here is ex explain the situation. So leave if you have no business. <laughs> yeah, right. I'm going to leave with Shiro. There isn't a problem even if I'm here if you're going if you're not going to do anything, right? I see. There certainly is no problem. I would like to keep this short explanation short. If you will not interrupt, go sit in the corner quietly. Alright, I guess I'll do so. Ilya passes Kotomine and walks to the wall. Well, I shall answer your question before I explain the situation. Do not be too surprised, Emiya Shiro. Kotomine reaches out. He unbuckles the belt and removes the covering. The arm there is not Emiya Shiro's arm. I can tell even through the wrapped cloth. My left arm is not part of my body. It is a foreign substance that should not be there, attached by opposing the natural providence. Kotomi, this is... It is Archer's left arm. 
In accordance with Archer's wish, I have transplanted it from his corpse. Archer's wish? Wait, did you say corpse? He disappeared after the transplant was completed. He was almost dead when he was carried here, but surprisingly, he endured until the operation ended. It must be because of his capacity for independent action. Archer has been eliminated. Then the remaining servants are Zolkan's assassin, Sakura's rider, and... No. I don't think I can call her a servant anymore. Hold on. Archer disappeared, right? Then isn't it weird that his arm's still here? His left arm would have disappeared too if he disappeared before the plant transplant was completed. But that has been cut and transplanted to your body while Archer was still into this world. It is part of a heroic spirit that has been connected to your magic circuit and it stays in this world using your magical energy. It has become part of your body after the transplant was completed. The left arm will remain even if Archer disappears after that. That left arm is already yours now. Then, this is really his arm? Yes, you two would have died in your conditions. Archer lost the core that anchored him to this world, while you lost your arm in a mortal wound. Fortunately, Archer did not have many physical wounds, so he saved your life by offering you his body. The left arm that melted, the heat that violated my mind, and this left arm that is not mine. Everything tells me that the event in that forest really did happen. I fell in that forest, and I was saved by Archer after that. But is it even possible to transplant a servant's body onto a human? It's possible to just connect them. Spiritual doctors are said to heal the soul and not the body. I guess the priest here is the real thing, in contrast to his looks. I accept your compliment, but this is nothing to celebrate. Joining two separate spiritual bodies is forbidden magic. It cannot succeed. Spiritual bodies, resurrection and restoration of souls are divine mysteries that cannot be handled with magic. That is why I thought I only succeeded in shape and expected him to die of shock, but... Shiro and Archer are a special case. I find not earlier that he would pull through if the connection was made. Yulia looks away and lets her eyes wander sadly. Oh, well I do not know why. All I know is that you two were suited for each other. I was surprised when I started the operation. Even twin brothers would not look this alike. I flex my left arm to test his words. I don't feel anything. I don't even feel pain. It's like a lump of dead meat. It doesn't move no matter what I do. It's like a hand known by loss of circulation. The sensation of a part of my body is not moving brings mental fear rather than physical pain. The left arm is just a piece of metal. One might feel constricted like this if one became a tin man. It doesn't move at all. Was the operation really successful? Do not wish for such an excessive thing. That is all it can do right after connecting it. It shall familiarize with your body in a few days. I told you earlier, but you two are compatible. At this rate, it should heal well enough to give you no trouble in leading an ordinary life. But be warned, I am only saying that the magic circuits are compatible. No matter how suited you may be to his arm, this arm is not the arm of a heroic spirit. I'm sorry, this is arm is the arm of a heroic spirit, something a human cannot handle. No, it is more like a weapon than an arm. It is powerful, but it will swallow you if you use it. Does that mean I'll self-destruct? Of course, if a human like you uses the arm of a heroic spirit, your body will be consumed by Archer's arm. No, the term blown away is more accurate. Your body is spiritually far inferior to Archer's arm. Archer's magic circuit will be activated if you use that arm even once. At that time, your body will be unable to withstand Archer's magic and it will break down. Look, 
It is not that your lifespan is shortened with each use. The time bomb in you will be turned on once you use it. What is that? In short, that means I'll certainly die if I try to do what Archer does, even once. Then, this cloth is for that reason? Yes, it is a seal. The magic circuit in your left arm will not be activated as long as you keep it on. Your left arm is treated as a different object, even if you use magic. But do not let your guard down. Magical energy flows through your body, even if you do not use any magic. Pain will assail your arm as it reacts and tries to activate. Your left arm is covered with the shroud of Martin to prevent that. It should be able to suppress the infringement from your left arm to a certain extent, as long as you keep it on. Hold on, to a certain extent? That means it cannot completely suppress your arm. Yes, you will be consumed by Archer's arm, whether you use it or not. If you want to live to an old age, become a great enough Magus to match the arm. You should then be able to seal your arm without the shroud. I estimate it would be about 10 years before the arm consumes you. You have that much time. You can become a master Magus and control your arm, or you can fail and be consumed. It is not an imminent threat. This is like I was remodeled without my knowing, but it's no use complaining. I would have died in that forest. Transplanting Archer's arm was the only way to save my life, so complaining would mean I don't want to live. I understand. Let me thank you. You did another favor for me. Could you please pray that it doesn't happen a fourth time? I suppose I do not need to worry if you can talk like that. Then go outside. Rin is waiting for you in the chapel. Kotomine heads out to the door. I get off from the bed and put on the prepared jacket. I can't move my left hand, so I just drape it over my shoulders. Okay, it won't hurt if I keep my guard up. Let's go, Yumi. Oh, yeah, I'm coming. I exit and find myself in the courtyard. The sky is dark and it's already nighttime. I forgot to tell you, but you can easily take off that shroud. The choice is always yours. You are free to use Archer's power, but your survival will not be guaranteed. Do your best with that in mind. Tosaka glares at me as soon as I enter the chapel. I don't know what I did to deserve it, but I'm relieved to know she's alright. Well, everyone is treated now. Archer's arm has been transplanted to MES Shiro, and Rin's poison is purified. Is there anything else you require of me? Of course not. You might claim our lives as collateral if you do us any more favors. <clears throat> I see. Then we shall be parting here. But let me ask as the supervisor. What are you going to do now, Rin? The Holy Grail of War is a failure now. The outcome is practically decided already, as most of the remaining masters do not have servants. <clears throat> Tosaka shuts her mouth. The match is pretty much decided, just like Kotomine said. The only masters are with servants, with servants are Zouken and Sakura. Ordinarily, the last two standing would fight, but Sakura cannot oppose Zouken. Looking at it that way, it's already over. Mato Zouken will either recapture Mato Sakura or kill her. It will be difficult to stop him, and you are under no obligation to do so. There is no benefit to kill Zouken. Oh, is that because masters of up their servants can't obtain the holy ground? Right. That is why there is no reason to fight. Any more battle is meaningless. You would be wise to stay in your mansion and wait until the war is over. Thanks for your warning, but I'm not going to forfeit. I'm surprised. So you cannot give up the Holy Grail? Of course not. I'm still a master even if I lost my servant. Don't assume I'm going to forfeit just because I'm alone now. Oh, I see. You are certainly right. There is one other who shamelessly stayed on the battlefield after losing his servant, so you cannot give up easily. <laughs> Shiro has nothing to do with this. This is my decision. I haven't given up yet. 
and I don't intend to let Zoukin win. Neither of those will save her. Tosaka. I open my eyes wide and look at Tosaka. Why do you look so happy? I didn't copy you, okay? I'm not giving up because I think I still have a chance of winning. I'm not like you, staying in it even when I don't have any chance. Yeah, I thought so. That's what I expected from you, Tosaka. That's annoying in a way too, but it's fine if you understand. She looks away. Tosaka doesn't want to give the Holy Grail to Zouken, not because of her sense of justice. Sakura cannot be saved if Zouken wins. If we want to save Sakura, Sakura has to obtain the Holy Grail, or else someone who wants to save her has to claim it. That's why Tosaka said she or Sakura has to win. That's the only reason she's fighting against Mato Zouken. Tosaka cannot obtain the Holy Grail anymore, but is still wanting to save Sakura, her younger sister. So what about you, Emiyashiro? Will you not give up the Holy Grail, just like me? No, I won't stop fighting. I have my goals too. I won't let Zouken do as he wishes. I see. I shall not stop you if you want to fight. There is a hopeless difference in your powers, but Mato Zouken is a weak person. I am sure you can devise some plan. We look at each other silently. Some plan, huh? I can't come up one with myself, but with Tosaka, we just might figure out how to beat the old man. A conversation ends. The treatment is over, so Kotomine requests that we leave, as we are not asking for protection here. I'm leaving if you don't tell me to. Hey, do you have a place to go, Yulia? I still have my castle, and Sela and Liz will come if I call to them, so I still have a place to go back to. Why are you asking such a thing? Well, it's dangerous to be by yourself, right? I want you to stay at my place if you don't mind. I think it's more convenient too. I don't mind, but I have to refuse. That woman is at your place. Then, Ilya answers me in a weird way. I stare at Tosaka because I don't understand what she means by I don't mind, but I won't go. Oh, she looks like she doesn't want to interfere. Oh, so you chose Mato Sakura, Emiya Shiro. I do not mind taking care of Ilya Spiel. Even if she goes back to her castle, Mato Zouken will only kidnap her. I refuse. I'm taking Ilya. No way. I'm borrowing Ilya. I'm sorry, but I can choose where I want to go. That is unfortunate. So Ilya feels is to stay at the Tosaka household. The, don't say such a stupid thing. The master of Ainsburn will not go to Tosaka's house. Okay, then where are you going to go? You'll have to go back to your castle if you don't want to stay at the church, my house, or Shiro's place. I know, that place is my workshop, so I won't go into the care of another master. I'm going to do things myself, even without Berserker. Oh, I thought so. You almost killed Shiro once, but he came and saved you in spite of that. But you don't feel any appreciation, and you're going back to your castle, huh? Did you hear that, Emiyakun? After you, all you've done for her, she still hates you. She says she doesn't want to stay in that tiny house of yours. That, what are you saying, Green? I never said anything like that. You're, you are saying it. You're not going to Emiyakun's place because he's unreliable, right? You're saying you're going to go back to your castle where you can feel safe. That's true, but I'm going back to my castle because I have to get away from Shiro. Huh? Oh, I see. So him being reliable doesn't matter because you hate him, huh? Well, why didn't you say so in the first place? Tosaka calmly criticizes Ilya. Uh, this is bad. Just as I'm worrying that this will turn bloody. Th that's not true. I never said I don't want Shiro. It's something else I don't like. Hear that? You're really popular, Emiya Kun. Tosaka smiles gently. And Ilya glares at her with vexation. Um, so whose house is Ilya going to? 
In the end, Ilya would be coming to my house. Tosaka and Ilya leave the chapel, arguing. I guess I can say they're getting along. My conversation is over. It's our problem now, so there's nothing to talk about with Kotomine. I follow after them and leave the chapel. But then, do not forget him, Yashiro. That body of yours will no longer permit you to fight. The priest gives his usual warning. That's not true. It's just that I can't use my left arm. I can still fight. I see. By the way, how is Mato Sakura's condition? Sakura's condition? That's a bit unexpected. I thought he was going to make more sarcastic remarks, so why is he suddenly worried concerned about how Sakura is doing? What's going on? What good would it do for you to care about Sakura? It seems you do not understand. I am talking about your body. Look, Emiyashiro, your body is in critical condition, but Mato Sakura is carrying a more dangerous bomb. You will be safe if you do not fight, but she is breaking down with each passing second. That is why you cannot stop fighting, even though you know fighting will only bring you closer to death. Emiya Shiro has to fight if you are to save Mato Sakura, but now fighting is like committing suicide for you. Therefore, you must understand that saving Mato Sakura means killing yourself. So what? That doesn't concern you at all. I chose to save Sakura. I won't back out on my oath, no matter what happens to my body. I see. A devotion to offer your life is beautiful. But that woman, is that woman truly so valuable to you? What? This is your last one, Emiya Shiro. To save a life is to satisfy one's desire. If you would like to keep Mato Sakura alive, do not forget this until the very end. I go outside. Tosaka and Ilya are waiting for me there. Ilya is looking up at the sky, and Tosaka is glaring at me like she wants to complain. You're late. What are you talking with Shiro about, Shiro? Or it's just his usual criticism. More importantly, there's something on my mind, but I don't know if I should bring it up. Tosaka, are you calling me by my first name now? <laughs> Fine. We're short on time, so I'll get right to the point. This is a serious matter, and we don't have much of a chance of winning if we go our separate ways. I'll forgive you for what you did yesterday, so you better be grateful. Her manner is pompous, but her words are even more so. Um, it's hard to understand, but what Tosaka wants to say is... Tosaka, does that mean... Yeah, I'm saying we can cooperate. First of all, you're unreliable. We're both out to defeat Zoken, so I can cooperate with you. Tosaka continues angrily. He feels like I'm hit in the head with a hammer. The sudden request is a great fortune. Oh, thank you. I owe you, Tosaka. There's no greater help than you having you on my side. I take Tosaka's hand and shake it up and down. This is troubling. I know I'm being too happy, but I can't stop myself. Hey, I understand. You don't have to thank me, so hold on. Tosaka retreats quickly. Then, I don't know why, but she looks at my left arm. Let me ask you beforehand. You do know whose arm that is, right? I know. It's, it's a matter of course. Tosaka then takes a deep breath. Then, you're my servant from now on, Shiro. You were saved thanks to my servant, so that's natural, right? And makes a ridiculous demand. What? I'm really lost. I try to figure out what Tosaka means. What are you saying? It's stupid to claim his ownership just because of something like that. Yes, Ilya can be reasonable after all. First of all, you're completely missing the point. Shiro is mine, so there's no way he can be yours. I see. So she's missing the point too. Hey, you're the one talking big. Do you think Shiro is yours because you spared him once? Then that goes for me as well. I was so angry when I met him in school that I almost went berserk myself. That's just because you're immature. I spared him every day, so Shiro's life is obviously mine. 
I can choose to keep him alive or not, and you have nothing to do with this, so stay out of this. I have nothing to do with this? Don't take me so lightly. I can't concern myself this much if I have nothing to do with this. Archer entrusted me with him, so I'm going to take responsibility and make sure he stays alive. I can almost hear their teeth grinding as they glower at each other. I wait for it then. Well, it's going to be troublesome no matter who wins. So, which one is it? It seems they realize that sol fighting solves nothing, so they've chosen me to make the final decision. What do you mean, which? So, which servant are you? Whose servant are you? I haven't heard your answer yet, so it's best to clarify it now. Yeah, Rin doesn't seem to realize you don't want her, so you have to be clear. Come on, say it. You're mine, right? I don't need to think about it. The one who has the right to order me around is... I guess Ilya. Um, I guess it's Ilya. I say the name that popped into my head. Yeah, you lucky guy. Ilya hugs me. I feel like I'm her brother, so I like how happy she is. But Tosaka is really mad, so my happiness adds up to zero. No, I think it's going into negatives now. <laughs> You've gone to a lot of work to flatter a little girl, Yamiya-kun. Or what? Do you like little girls? Ow. Tosaka scornfully emphasizes Yamiya-kun to criticize me. Her eyes look like they're blaming the socially weak, sending a wave of pain through my stomach. Hmm, that's unsightly, Rin. It's unladylike to take out your anger on someone else when you got dumb. That's why Hiro hates you. Don't talk like a grown-up and say such a stupid thing. I only talked about common knowledge. And first of all, who is dumped by who? Don't suck on Boris. Elia laughs and keeps on hugging me. See, isn't Rin scary, Shiro? But don't worry, I'll protect you if she tries something. Yuya makes a big smile and embraces me. I'm glad. I'm twice as glad as before, but... Please do something about that cold stare of hers that doesn't let me excuse myself. What? If you have something to say, come on, say it. It's nothing. Your interests are none of my business. I'm not happy, but I'm not going to say anything about it. But more importantly, why? She asked me directly, but... Oh, why what? I made my choice about thinking, so I actually don't know why I chose Ilya. Unbelievable. Do you really have a thing for little girls? No way, you idiot. I just said it because I felt like it. And I'm Ilya's garden now, so it's natural for me to choose her. Do you have a problem with that? Man, I'm being illogical. Yeah, you're my servant, Shiro. Tosaka is utterly stunned. Jelia is jumping with joy, and it's a big mess. You're talking, you're taking a defiant attitude now. Well, I'll let this go, but Sakura certainly has it tough. I'm curious. What exactly are you letting slide, Ilya? Er, Tosaka? But don't forget, even if you don't use it, your arm is mine. You have a responsibility to take Archer's place. Your body does just, doesn't just belong to you anymore. I can't argue with that. Tosaka lost Archer, and my life was saved thanks to his arm. Then I have to help Tosaka in his place. Yeah, you're right. We'll leave the servant thing aside for now, but I'll leave you in charge of everything. I don't know all that much, so it's better if you take care of the plans. That's right. I'm in charge of thinking, and you're in charge of execution. We're cooperating, so I'll make sure you work hard. That's right. Regardless of how it happened, my left arm has been replaced by Archer's. But Archer disappeared while completing his contract with Tosaka. It's only right that I succeed the promise that he could not fulfill. Then let's part here for now. I'm going back to my house to pack, so you go on ahead. 
Hey, are you going to come to my house? Of course, we're cooperating now, so we have to be together. Yuya doesn't want you to be you to be it. Lilia doesn't want to be at my house, and Saka is living at your place. And your house has to be the main base, no matter how we look at it. Oh yeah, when you put it that way, it makes sense. Jeez, I thought you were firm, but you're pretty loose too. Maybe I made the wrong choice. So Saka sighs and starts walking in the opposite direction. My house is this way, Ilya. Why are you following Tosaka? It's just for a bit. Rin wants my help, so I'm going to go with her. I'll head over there as soon as we're done, so you go on ahead. Ilya's going to help Tosaka? Really? Yeah, this is a serious matter, so we need one or two secret weapons. A secret I can't unlock myself might open to an Einsberg Magus. But I really don't want to find one. If Tosaka's inheritance, Kishir's chief's keepsake is just as I imagine. It's not something I can handle myself. Then I'm going as well. I'm not interested in Kishir's keepsake, but Zell Schweinor treasure chest sounds pretty. Yuya's skirt flutters as she runs off. Kishir Zell Schweinor? I tilt my head in wonder. I've never heard those names before. Are they famous among legitimate magi? The guests have left. The chapel regains its silence and the priest looks up at the statue. Was it fine to let the holy grail go? The voice comes from behind. Where was he hiding? The golden haired man asked the priest cheerfully. I do not mind. I never had any attachment to it. I will not stop the Holy Grail from siding with them. You're right. You had no wish from the start. If your words are true, it would not make sense to stop the Holy Grail. The man laughs. The priest's words, as if to make fun of the fact that he has no wish. He doesn't indeed speak the truth. It is just that the golden-haired man cannot comprehend the fact. But the priest has no wish. Kotomi Nekire does not need the power of the Holy Grail. He, all he has is a thorough inquiry. The Holy Grail merely answers one's wish. It is a machine to create the destined outcome for one's own question. Is there meaning in obtaining the answer that one wishes for? Kotomi, let me ask again. You really have no interest in the Holy Grail. I have no interest in a machine that grants wishes. The same should go for you, Gilgamesh. Our goals are not our wishes. We are merely seeking pleasure because it is more fun that way. It is like eating food. A wish is something that is answered, but humans will not be saved if a food, if a wish grants itself. The priest keeps on staring at the statue. And beyond it, to ten years in the past, when he still had a wish. The man is a child his father was gifted with on the man is a child his father was gifted with on a pilgrimage in 1967. The name Kire is supposedly a word of prayer. The father named his son in the hope he would be pure and beautiful. The boy grew up according to his expectations. Even as, young, even as a young child, he had morals and good sense, showing such great insight that people thought he was precocious. The father was delighted to be blessed with a great successor, and the son knew of his father's delight. It is a great pleasure for a parent to know his child is gifted. That must be why, that must have been why the man considered him valuable. Understanding this, the boy grew just as his father expected. There was no doubt. His inability to love his father was unrelated to meeting the man's expectations. The boy named Kire grew up healthy, but there was one point. He could not understand the beauty of which his father spoke. One morning he realized the inconsistency. He woke up, raised his head and knew. He was not sure why he understood at that moment. No, he wondered why it took him so long to realize. In either case, he knew what he had forgotten. 
His father prayed for him to be beautiful and named him Kie. That had always been his question. The things his father considered beautiful, the boy had never considered beautiful. It was as simple as that. He considered moss beautiful instead of butterflies. He considered poisonous plants beautiful instead of roses. He considered the evil beautiful instead of the good. He had a common man's sense of morality, recognizing that it is correct to be good. But by his nature, the boy was only interested in the exact opposite. Nobody can understand the agony he felt. Even Kotomine himself was never certain whether it was agony or not. But he worked hard. He tried to be pure and beautiful and pursued something he did not have from the start. Shaving away the skin, ripping off the flesh and dislocating the bones. He even tried looking within his body for what he could not find in his mind. His father spent ten, over 10 years on his pilgrimage wearing thorn shoes. The distance he walked could stretch to the moon. It was not for physical pain. For missionaries, the mental pain is far, for, far more significant. The boy abstained from eating during their pious act. If he was a sinner by nature, then according to the morals he believed in, he needed to punish himself to maintain balance in the world. Ten years passed. Unable to reach the epiphany he sought, he arrived at a single conclusion in its place. It was simple. In short, he did not have the sense to feel normal happiness. Good matters that people consider right and find happiness in. Philanthropy, trust, glory, safety. Such matters did not delight him, and it's just that he was born with the deficiency. All he took pleasure in was the suffering of others. Murder by others, love and hatred of others, the de degradation of others. Such negative concepts were the only things that made him feel happiness. His misfortune was carrying a sense of morality even when he had such a mind. The child understood at a young age that he was not in accord with the world, and he tried his best to overcome it. He did not surrender to his condition by indulging in twisted pleasure. He tried to save himself, one who could not find happiness in any normal way by turning himself into a normal person. And the path was his creed to become a priest and preach life like his father. It is said that God forgives everything. So he thought God would even save someone who is not born with it, like himself. But the result was tragic. He abode by the rules of God, followed the law, and lived modestly, but he could not find any pleasure greater than the pain of others. He believed in the church's teaching that forbade immorality, yet immorality was all he had. But there was no anguish there. From the beginning, he sought after something that did not exist. He did not lose something he had, so there was no reason for him to grieve. The only thing that concerned the priest as he matured was the question, why? Yes, at every crossroads of his life, the pleasure of committing crimes. One could understand if he reveled in his own corruption, satisfying his urges by committing crimes himself. Wealth gained from evil deeds. It would make sense if he entrapped others out of greed and obtained wealth. But, what was wrong with him to not even have the option of turning from good to evil? Who could possibly be born a defective being and end his life still detached from the world? Do they not come into this world with the premise that they harm the world? Call of a good sense. Acknowledgement of morals. Trial of justice. Every one of these conclude that evil should not exist. But what about it? If it should not exist, why are such things created? That is right. If one has a deficiency, one should not be born. The world hates evil and removes the faults. But something that was never wanted was given life. There are beings that exist to be hated and die. The man inquired where the crime was. His reward for years of anguish and blind devotion was not salvation. just. Why? It is a pure question, and also anger towards something unknown. Then why did you become a master? You do not need the Holy Grail if you have no wish. 
The inquiring words bring him back to the present. The priest, Kotomi Nakire, nods in self-derision. I did not need the Holy Grail. I was just interested in what was inside it. I sought the Holy Grail ten years ago because it tried to exist. No matter what it may be, I bless anything that comes, that tries to come into the existence. That is my job. Huh. Is that the case even if you have no interest in what is born? Of course. Even in the last Holy Grail war, I was not interested in the Holy Grail or its content. All I had back then was hatred towards a person who was the exact opposite of me. But the priest pondered. He can only find pleasure in others' suffering, but he is interested in the end of this Holy Grail war. Zolkin's actions behind the scenes. Another Holy Grail that is about to be born. Someone called all evils of this world was brought into existence by the people, but not wanted by the people. If it would conceive such a thing, maybe that is the whereabouts of good and evil, something that was stuffed into the shell but never hatched. The Holy Grail cannot give answers. The wish granting machine fulfills its owner's desire. So no revelation can be obtained even if someone without a wish obtains it. But what if I do not ask for answers, but instead create something from the Holy Grail that can give the answers? What? The man narrows his eyes. The priest is smiling in front of the statue. Kotomine. That smile is that of a dying woman. That expression is worn by a man with no interest or desire. The answer should come soon. If this question is a blasphemy to God, his eyes aren't showing joy. The priest, like an angel that fell to the ground, I shall pledge before God. With all my might, I shall question the Lord even unto death. Looks up at the distant sky with cursing eyes.